Welcome. My name is Janice Plotkin, and for 15 years I worked at the Mill Valley Film Festival as senior film programmer. Uh, I also was one of the curators for the series For Your Consideration. Uh, that ended a couple years ago, but I'm very delighted to be invited back to host a conversation uh, with the maker and the, the talent uh, for the film Asia, uh, an Israeli film which uh, just recently won nine Israeli awards called the Ophir Award, just practically up and down the line of all aspects of the creative part of making the film. And also at its world premiere at Tribeca Film Festival, it won three prizes, uh, most notable the Nora Ephron Prize, which is a, named after the wonderful writer, the late Nora Ephron for emerging female talent, best director, was also given to our director, Ruthie Prebar, and also best actress. And we have with us Alona Yeev, who uh, uh, won that award. So um, this is a, a fantastic outing for, uh, for Ruthie. Uh, we're really excited for you both in um, the creation of this work um, and the execution and, and launching of it. It's uh, uh, for a first time filmmaker. I know you have had uh, short works that have been featured in important places like the Cannes Film Festival and uh, participated in also um, workshops that help to uh, shape and mentor emerging artists like yourself in Rotterdam and at Cannes. Uh, we're very excited to see that uh, the results of all that preparation for your very young uh, life as a filmmaker. So congratulations on that part. Uh, and Yelona Yeev is here. Uh, congratulations on your prize. And I uh, want to know a little bit, I'll be asking you more about your career as well as your, your feelings about the role here as Asia. I wanted to um, just clarify the, the way it's pronounced here in the United States is Asia. And, uh, but I have Russian friends and I know Asia is a Russian name. So I didn't know if you want me to call it Asia or Asia. What's your preference? Um, I mean, people call it however they want and they're gonna do it anyway. For us, it's Asia because that's the way we pronounce it the name of the character. Um, okay, so that's what I'm <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, let, Ruthie, let's first start with um, my curiosity about the genesis of the story. Um, I know from the point of view of first time writers of novels, the writer Virginia Woolf uh, once said uh, the a first novel is exploring your belly button. So I wanted to know as a first feature length film, dramatic film that you've made. Uh, how much was this related to any uh, personal or autobiographical elements of your life or people that you knew? How did you find the story? Um, so it's, it, I mean, it's obviously, I guess you could see from the film that it, it's a very personal film for me. Um, and the subject matter is, is difficult and um, I chose that because uh, 14 years ago, I've lost my sister, my older sister. And um, this is something that has been with me in my entire, um, in my entire work as a filmmaker uh, and as a writer and as a person. And, um, but I've, I've looked at that experience from so many different aspects. And uh, what I did with, um, with Asia and the way that it was created, it was, I think, for the first time I started thinking about my mother and how she dealt well, with the situation and how uh, she was um, by my sister's bedside and she was a few months in the hospital and we would all be there. But I felt like I was not, I could not really, um, I was there, but I, emotionally I was completely detached. So, uh, I mean, I could not really be at a place where I understood what was going on, where I could, um, where I could be, just be myself and be by my sister. But my my mother, she was the complete opposite. She was so immersed in that situation and so full of empathy and love and care 
uh, for my sister. And at, when the time came, she was also able to say goodbye to her, which was something that I was not able to do. And um, with that feeling that I could not say goodbye to my sister, uh, I went on to, to, to write this film because um, I, I took the character of Asia and she starts off just like I was, uh, detached from the situation, unable to accept the fact that her daughter is dying. And she reaches this point uh, where she is completely there in the situation um, and able to be with her daughter, not only uh, let her go, but uh, be the one that, is, uh, that it helps her to do that and helps her die. And um, just the, 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 the way that she unfolds as a person, as a mother, uh, this is what I wanted to explore. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, there are no really, it, it's not biographical uh, because I'm not a single mother uh, and nor am I, um, I wasn't raised by a single mother and I'm not of Russian descent, but the feelings, the emotional um, journey that the film goes through is, is something that I can really relate to. I, I'm very <laughs> sorry for your loss. Uh, it's very hard to lose a sibling and a loss like that, I, I think you probably know goes through definitely different permutations of grief and acceptance, but it never goes away. So I'm, I'm sorry. Right. And I'm, I, I guess the inspiration that came from that was you working through uh, the emotional experience by telling the story. So thank you for that. And thank you for sharing that part of yourself with us today. Um, I was curious also um, uh, that it was a Russian story and I didn't expect it. And I, uh, again, because uh, the title Asia, I thought, oh, well, maybe there's uh, something related to Asia, but no, it's, it's a story about a Russian emigre, I presume, uh, and her daughter. And, I, um, and there were some elements of referencing the difference, uh, the, the prospective boyfriend uh, of, um, Zivka? No, wait. Vika, Vika. Uh, knew right away that he was in a Russian apartment. So uh, I was wondering if you could talk about that choice of making it a mm -hmm. Russian family and um, and then also asking the same thing, uh, Alona, to you. Okay. Um, so when I started writing the story, I knew I wanted it to be about mother and daughter. Um, that had no choice but to rely on one another in a very difficult situation. And there's something about Israeli society that we all have um, such a huge circle of friends and relatives and family and it's such a small country. So there's no problem to travel if someone needs you. Uh, if you grow up here and your parents grew up here, you just have that. And I, I wanted these um, women to be on their own. So right away, I, I started thinking of them as immigrants. And it just made sense for them to be Russian immigrants because there's such a large uh, population of Russian immigrants in Israel. Um, so it was just a matter of how I tell the story and make it the, the most, um, like, just, it, it, was, it was to tell the story as, as close to what I wanted to tell. And I thought this was the best way. But obviously, when I started writing it, um, after a couple of months, when I knew, okay, this is what I was going to do, and I was very uh, devoted to the writing, I said, I'm, I'm not going to direct a film without knowing any word in Russian, um, because half of, practically half of the film is, is, is spoken in Russian. So I went on and I uh, went to learn some Russian, and it's such a difficult language that I can't say I know Russian, uh, but I can read it. And if I know parts of the, if I know the words, like I, I, I memorize them. So when I came, when the time came to direct the film, I did know what I was, I, I could hear the sentences and know, okay, um, did they say that? Did they miss a line? Um, so it really helped me out. So I, I, I saw that choice. Um, really as a way of seeing their outsiderness, uh, that, there yeah. were, that, that they were different than other families because they were Russian. Uh, and I, I was going to ask Alona if um, for you, did you bring, 
I understand you were you emigrated to Israel from Saint Petersburg uh, when you were a teenager. Uh, and how what what part of yourself, your Israeli self or your Russian self, did you bring to the role? Um, and if and if be, coming from that place of actually a different culture, um, how did that inform what you were? Yeah, your your performance. Um, so first of all, I was really when I wrote the script, uh, I really was surprised, uh, surprised um, how uh, you know how exact the details about the Russian culture it have in, uh, inside the script. I was really surprised how the how they truly really understood the you know the, the kind of. Uh, dialogue between the Russian culture people and uh, you know it's much more um, um, you know they they you know they a little bit more distant when than uh, Israel is that really very really close to each other and in the speaking in the in the sharing emotions and, and you know all the script was built really on the you know, it's it was really it's like we split it with the uh, with a Russian, uh, no Russian, uh, <laughs> no, Russian is, uh, specifics uh, in the in the context in the dialogue. Uh, yeah, I I remember when I first time wrote the script. I really it was kind of oh, uh, I, first of my question it was like you asked why why how so strong how. Why did you write this? And the second was, I'm Russian. You know, why? You know, it was really surprised to be, to be why, why Ruti that really has no completely Russian roots really went to this side. Um, you know, I really, as myself, I really live in Israel already for most of my life. You know, I was born in Russia, but I really most of my life in here. So in this way, I'm really a little bit uh, different from us. Uh, because I'm, I feel myself mostly Israeli. Um, because uh, Asya in the movie, she kind of came to Israel already grown up with a little child. So it's a little bit really different uh, story. Um, but uh, you know, it's a really kind of uh, people, kind of um, um, yeah, kind of a part of, part of the culture that I really know. So, that is part of myself, so yes. it was really found, present to, <laughs> for me. Once I realized that I, I started paying attention uh, to your performance, particularly in the hospital, with patients that might have been Russian Israeli or uh, Israeli Israeli, because I can tell by the accent, or you were speaking Russian to. Uh, the Russians. I, I don't know if a general audience in America might get the subtlety of that. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but I, I enjoyed what I saw as a kind of deeper bond that I felt uh, that you might have had with Russian patients. And of course, the lover uh, was a Russian doctor. And uh, uh, I just I just saw that there might have been an, a bond there that was um, that, that felt authentic. Um, one more question to you, Alona, and that has to do with your own uh, career as an actress. I understand you also were a filmmaker. Uh, and I wanted to know if there are roles, the kinds of roles that exist in Israel right now for Russian speakers or Russian actresses, actors, or yeah, if there's a, there was a, a departure for me. This wasn't a a police story. This wasn't about corruption. It wasn't about violence. Sometimes we attribute those things to Russian storytelling, you know, mafia related stuff. I, I was just curious to know what the landscape is for you as an actor. Um, I think really for the last years, it's really started to be much more and more uh, really part of the Israeli society and Israeli cinema. I really I see it's about from our, my auditions that I really see completely different kinds of um, uh, status and different uh, levels of education and different uh, characters. So I really feel it's really already not really uh, separate me too much from the 
from the from the Israel from Israel roles from Israel society society. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, one more thing I wanted to add is, I think um, what this, the, the Russian part, what it brought to the film is just another layer that you can read the film from. Um, because Asia and Vika, they speak um, mostly in Russian. I mean, Asia will speak Russian to Vika and Vika will answer in Hebrew. And um, it changes throughout the film. Sometimes they speak uh, Asia will speak more Hebrew and Vika will answer in, in Russian. And I think towards the end of the film, they really find this common ground of how they, they talk to one another. Um, so this is just another way to read the film. And I have to say, um, as a director, and I, I don't think I've ever told this to Alona, but uh, I remember the first time I, I, I saw the rehearsals um, that she and, and Gera um, who is um, uh, portraying Stas in the film, the, the married doctor. And uh, I, I saw them together and their chemistry, and I'm not talking about, it, it was just um, to hear them speak their mother tongue. It was completely different than anything I've ever seen Alona do with other actors. And it was something that I took into the film because I thought, okay, uh, one of the things that she finds that she has a, a connection with is through the language, because this is, a, it, it's, it comes so natural to talk with someone that knows your, your mother tongue, and it's not the same when you talk with other people, and although um, I think Asia, also in the film, she's very fluent in Hebrew, she doesn't have a, a problem speaking Hebrew, but it's still, it's not her mother tongue, so this is really, I, I, Felt like it was a very interesting topic to talk about uh, in the film, and it's not upfront, but more subtly. Agreed. It's a subtext, and I also thought, uh, again, in the forty years that I've been looking at uh, Israeli cinema, there's one other Israeli-made film completely made by Russians. I think it's Elena or Yelena. Uh, it was. I'm sorry, I can't remember the title, but it was all cast in Russian. And I have not seen as much uh, in Israeli cinema since then that really addresses uh, the lives of Russian immigrants in Israel and telling their stories. Uh, and I, I felt there was a double, uh, in the creation of uh, uh, Vika, uh, she's an outsider because she's got a degenerative disease and she wants to be a normal teenager and she wants to be accepted by these her, her Israeli Israeli born friends and uh, I found that also kind of a double do, double poignancy and uh, really really deep and really beautiful. Um, okay. I was curious uh, to know vis-a-vis -vis the culture of assisting in a death in Israel. It's mm -hmm. something that's discussed in the United States. It's done some states allow it. Uh, it's not illegal, but it's very controversial. Um, and I was wondering just the issue of, of assisting a family member through their passage from life to death. Uh, mm -hmm. How is that looked upon in Israel? Um, I think it's the same as in the States. It is illegal. It's not something that you talk about. Um, what I wanted to have in the film is for, and, and I think it's, I've succeeded um, because most people, they do not ask themselves that question. Most viewers, um, they just accept the ending of the film as it is. And they don't, um, in a way, it's not as controversial as I thought it would be. Um, I wanted people to not talk about it, to, not because uh, there's a problem about, to talking about it, but it's just, I wanted it to feel so natural that you wouldn't ask yourself, why is she doing that? Is that illegal? Is it a right, the right or wrong thing to do? I wanted it to be so natural um, and so true to the relationship that, that both of them built uh, that you will not need to ask yourself that question. And I think, I mean, from what I've seen so far from the viewers and the questions that I've gotten, um, it has not been raised that much, which is a, for me a good sign that the film's working. 
Yes, and also you know, <laughs> to, to tell to reveal the ending. You don't want that to be. I hope everyone who's uh, listening to this has seen seen the film and seen the ending. There was a double. Uh, 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 the mother is both a mother who's ambivalent about that role, but she's a nurse. So right. I, my feeling was that nurses carry. Uh, they, I, I do believe they have to be angels. Uh, I, I think that their <laughs> love and nurturing and care for patients is, you know, something special. So I, I in writing the story, making her a nurse, but an ambivalent mother, there's a juxtaposition there. Uh, right. Do you want to talk a little bit about that conflict? Uh, yeah, sure. It's, I mean, it was, that was something that was, um, in the base of, of, of who she is, I said, because she is capable of caring for another person in a very deep manner. She, she's um, uh, full of compassion towards her patients, but in a way she's unable to do the same thing for her daughter. And for me, that was very, very interesting to think of a mother that is unable to touch her daughter the way she touches uh, strangers. And um, I mean, for her, for, for a woman to become a mother at such an early age, and she never really took it upon herself to think what kind of mother I want to be. And, it, and the fact that her daughter is dying is making her like a, um, I said at the beginning of where I came from. Um, she's just uh, so afraid of what's going to happen to her daughter that she remains attached from her. And only through um, the progression of the disease, uh, <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, it's okay. So only should, should I wait a minute or no. Okay. I'm... So only through the progression of the disease she realizes what she needs to do and how what kind of mother she needs to, to be for her daughter. Um and, and I think she learns how to care for her daughter, which is different than caring for for a person that will come for a few days to the hospital and leave. Uh, she needs to just be there for her. She needs to be by her side. She doesn't necessarily need to do anything else, just being there. And this is something that she learns how to do because um, throughout the film, she keeps looking for uh, solutions to problems that uh, she thinks are there or she assumes that there are problems that she needs to fix. And uh, to learn how to just be in the situation without needing to do something all the time. This is something that she needs to learn. Well, yes, we saw that. I mean, she was very young and she was hot and beautiful. And uh, <laughs> I noticed after work, she went out for drinks. She didn't necessarily run home to be with her daughter. Right. Uh, and I, I, I thought that was, uh, Alona, the, the beautiful part of your, your performance was that you were both able to do both. You, you were brave enough to go to a bar <laughs> Uh, and look around and want to dance and maybe take someone home or not. Uh, but also this character that can also give uh, support and love to sick people and then really struggling. I was wondering if you, how you imagined your character because maybe a young mother like your character was, was not necessarily nurtured by her own mother. Um, what, what did you imagine Alona, uh, for yourself when you created the character with its complexities? Um, first of all, about what Ruthie spoke about, about the, you know, the vein that she learned to, to become a, more and more um, with her daughter, what it doesn't exactly mean. Um, and one of this expression, it was the way that she touch her daughter, you know, it's uh, in the beginning, it's really kind of very technical kind of, as a nurse, I know how to make a massage or how to check the you know, blood pressure and uh, and uh, during the movie, she really learned to touch her really like a uh, like mother from the soft place, from the, uh, from the place that you want to be closer and uh, to, to help and to, to feel. Um, so I think about working, it was really what kind of scale that it really built, built together with Ruti, kind of uh, which step we, we are now 
which level we exactly, you know, because it was a shoot, it's a not chronological show us it was really kind of a decision which way of the movie we really, uh, Asia is, um, became closer and closer to become. Uh, and uh, and about you know other sides of Asia, you know I think you know everyone has have a lot of sides and we completely someone something one in our jobs and something else in our homes and then something third in the um, buses uh, people that we met uh, uh, by by the way so um, so you know I just use it when in in was in. You know, I really completely separated and when I wanted to be the to flirt with the boys, I was flirting with the boys and at home it's something completely else. And, uh, and you know, I know that every each part kind of completes uh, each other. It really makes uh, you know, I, I believe that Jasa really enjoyed to be flirting girl that really succeed to to reach every boy that she wants. So um, um, yeah, it's for sure make them feel uh, uh, complete some other holes you know, inside their soul that she has uh, you know, playing with this. Uh, um, um, Ruti, yeah, let's let's talk about the casting because uh, the it was remarkable to me the similarity between Shira Haas and Alona, and then also. Uh, Shira Haas now is well, I, I assume, better known in the United States uh, from her role in Stissel, which has become very successful here. And then also Unorthodox, which she won an Emmy uh, for that performance. So I, uh, at what point in her career did you cast her? And how did that come about? And also the same with Alona. Um, well, Shia uh, was well known for Shtisa when we cast her, um, but not like like he is now after an orthodox. Uh, we shot the film, I guess, back to back. Um, like we shot Asia, and I think um, like a couple of months later, um, she she flew to to shoot an orthodox. So uh, and they came out around the same time. Um, so she really had this huge boost in her career, which was which was incredible, and she really deserves it because she's such an amazing talent. And um, I mean, I have to say that when we went on to casting, um, it wasn't a, uh, we we had a lot of additions for both roles separately for us and for Vita, and um, I wanted them to be uh, very similar to one another physically. This is something that I knew right away because there's something about this film that is, it, it talks about like the switching roles of the mother and the daughter. Sometimes the mother is the daughter, sometimes the daughter is the mother. Like you can't really tell. And the, the small age difference, they, all, they look almost like sisters. So I really wanted them to look very similar to one another. And um I have to say with Alona and Shira, I was not, uh, I, I couldn't tell um, how similar they looked until I saw them together in the same room. And just the moment I saw them, it was very clear that I, I found what I was looking for because I knew they were both incredible actresses, but just um, to put them face to face together, it was such a, a unique experience to, to watch that happen. And you know, you, you watch them and you say, okay, I have my Asa and Vika and this is it. And, and from then on, I was very, very um, um, just relieved <laughs> to, found, to have found exactly what I was looking for. Congratulations on that. And, <laughs> and, and Alona, did you know Alona's work or was the, the, how would you say, are you, was her physical presence part of the decision in casting Alona? Um, or had you seen her work? How did that, how did that happen? Um, I didn't know her face, but I, I mean, it was more about how, um, how she just fit the role. It, she, she was just, I, I remember watching her. She was, she was actually the first, um, actress we auditioned. It, she, she came into the room and she was the first one I, I, I ever saw. So I was, 
I was just, I looked at her and the scene that she was making and I was just, okay, she's, she's incredible. Maybe I'm just thinking that because she's the first one I'm seeing. No, but she's really incredible. So I'm, 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 I'm just saying to myself, okay, but I have to see more. I cannot just take the first one I'm seeing. And, you know, when, it's, when you're starting to um, do additions and it's a script that you've been working on for a while, which I have when we started um, the casting, then it's so exciting to see the scenes that you wrote come to life in auditions. So sometimes you get mixed up with that, but with Alona, it was just so clear that she is, that she could be a wonderful asset. So it was just about finding the, the good match of, of the mother and the mother. Let's talk about, uh, this is a, a woman's story. It's a mother-daughter ambivalence love. Uh, and, and I'm curious to know about your crew and why you made the choice to have an all-female crew. Mm -hmm. Want to talk about that? Uh, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it was, it was a choice. It was a, a very, uh, I mean, it, wasn't, it didn't happen by mistake. Um, part of it is the fact that I'm very aware of the inequality in the film industry and I knew that once I had the chance I would choose women to work with because I think they don't get enough opportunities um, and they are wonderful uh, there are wonderful um, crew members out there that don't get the chance to show it and I knew I would find them and I did um, and it was wonderful to work with women and I mean, this is a, a, a story that is told from a female perspective. And of course, there are more and more films being made by women, but we are still um, not represented as we should be. And uh, having a film that is told from a female per perspective and told about uh, women, um, I thought it, would, it only made sense that it would be made by women. Yes, and, and I, I'm assuming that your cinematographer who won a prize at Tribeca had a certain level of intimacy with your characters I, I, that was astounding to me. Um, so the use of the camera was, uh, uh, I think, forwarded the drama uh, in a way that I don't know if, uh, there, if, you're, if Alona and Shira were more comfortable uh, to have a female camera person in their face um I maybe you can talk about maybe you can talk about that Alona a bit if it if it felt qualitatively different in any way to have a female crew supporting you um, well, I believe sure it really has the influence uh, and actually because really female's point of view of the story um, no, actually, what is really genius about Daniela, especially, I think it's it really was in one side he was really, really, uh, really made clear that she really knows what knew what she what she's doing and really know to explain it to all the crew in the, in, the, in her way. I mean, I'm I'm going to do now this and this and this, and really, for, um, it was really amazing to see how all the people really succeed to hear and uh, how helps it to everyone, to actors, to light men, to sound men. And, uh, and, and in, in the other way, it's really, because the camera it was so close to us, um, I really didn't hear her. I just, I don't know, it really was completely on the wall for, um, for us. And, um, so, so somehow it was really amazing, amazing, uh, uh, amazing uh, composition <laughs> connection so two, two things the amazing two things uh, yeah uh, together uh, to be in one way really strong and in one and, uh, uh, really to to know how to take all the technical cool uh, straightforward and another way to make it really unfeeling for us for actors for, director I really feel completely comfortable for all the shootings for all the scenes for all the preparations it was really amazing good it seemed that way I had <laughs> um, uh, I was curious to know what 
you both are doing now and as your next projects. Um, if you have something in mind that you want to work on. Um, and uh, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so um, I'm working on my next feature film, uh, which is, uh, we're now raising funds for it. Um, it's also going to be told from a female perspective. I guess um, my life is from a female perspective, so I'm going to keep telling these kind of stories. Um, dramatic, because uh, I'm dramatic. <laughs> and uh, so there's one feature that is already written out and there's another project that is um, now being developed uh, and that's actually going to be shot in the States. So hopefully um, we're going to get the funding for that as well. And a TV series and I don't know, a lot of things that have been going on in the past year since ASEA came out, which is, um, which is good because we're all in quarantine at the moment. So it's good to think about the bright future that is waiting for us all. <laughs> we're waiting for a bright future. We're waiting yep. for better days to come. I'm waiting to get my hair colored. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Alona, uh, for you, uh, tell me what, your, what the future looks like for you right now in terms of your career. Uh, no, actually, because of the current and so, so all the ambitions that I have now, it's kind of I have to film myself at home for uh, for, <laughs> for all the next project that I don't know when exactly gonna be. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I continue just uh, you know this acting life, uh, auditions and interesting scripts and uh, some dialogues with interesting directors and. Uh, so I really, I'm really happy that Asia uh, really make made made me to a lot of very interesting uh, um, script writers and uh, directors already. So it's really, I really enjoyed it now. So, uh, so in spite of all the situation, I also have a uh, uh, hope and. Uh, well, I I read the plans. <laughs> Oh, it is, that Israel had vaccinated 20% of, of the population has already been vaccinated in Israel. That's very good. Yeah. Are you feeling optimistic about that? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, there was some, oh, I know what I wanted to ask. How is, has the film been released at all in Israel or was it available on streaming platforms or are Israelis seeing the film? No, not yet. It has been seen uh, as part of the Academy Awards of um, Israel, and it has been uh, released um, for a short period of time. But it it was on um, like it wasn't in theaters in Israel yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're expecting a full release in in the few months to come. Hopefully, when the cinemas open, because they haven't opened up since uh, last March. Um, so this was, so I, I mean, people have seen it and had the opportunity to see it, but for a very short period of time, uh, we're, we're just waiting for the cinemas to reopen. It's, it's been too long. Too long. Too long. I'd like to see it on the big screen. I think it was definitely it's were, a completely you, different experience. Right. Because there was so much, I, you took pause between the drama for the landscape of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the light and what was visual and beautiful and urban about Jerusalem. Yeah. It, wasn't the, it was not the religious capital of Western civilization. It was just a city. Um, right. And uh, I, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Um, Anything else that you would like to tell our audience? I have one thing to tell the audience, which is uh, for your consideration is playing at the Rafael Theater, but actually you can find it on your streaming platform through the Rafael, uh, Rafael at Home on uh, from January 22nd till February 11th. So uh, for your consideration is including, I think 20, 24 films uh, and Asia is just one of them, but for the audience that's 
listening now, please take a look at the other films and tell your friends about this extraordinary film. And to both of you, I say, is there anything last minute you want to say uh, to us here as your audience about the film and uh, maybe your favorite moment in making the film or anything <laughs> like that? Um, for me, what I want to say is just that um, it is uh, a film that deals with a lot of difficult subject matters, um, but I find it uh, in, in the way we created it um, is hopeful. And uh, even in the darkest moments, um, uh, I think uh, there's beauty and there is a liveliness um, that can be found. And this is what the film talks about and about how you can find hope in, in a very bleak situation. Um, and although us and Vika um, uh, really have a hard time together, they also find the path to one another and, and a great bond uh, that forms between them. And that is what we live for, to be with our, our loved ones, uh, to be able to hold them, to be able to share moments of laughter and love and joy with them. And this is what I want people to get out of the film, yes. especially at these times where we're all confined to our homes. And it's, it's, it's a good thing to be hopeful. <laughs> Agreed, agreed. Enjoy. And dancing. I think it's important <laughs> to dance, definitely. And yeah, I'll, even in your home. It, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely at home. Alona, anything else you would want to say uh, to the audience about your experience about the film? Yeah, I think maybe I, I will say something similar that you just said. It's uh, a little thing that this movie somehow became very relevant to these times because she, because it's speaking about uh, the importance of being together with the people that we love and, uh, and how much important to touch each other in the warm way and how important to, to hug each other. And, uh, no, it's really this the this sense of life. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, so. Agreed. Real, real living is just being a human with each other right now and loving and kind. Yeah, I think yeah. being kind is like really helpful right now. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I thank you very much. I wish you very good luck uh, with the thank launching you. of the film when it happens in, in Israel. And also, I understand you have an American distributor. Yeah. So um, the film will find its way uh, to movie theaters and other film festivals, I presume, uh, once that all happens. And uh, I say to you, uh, Lahitra Oat, I hope I meet you again um, sometime in the future. And it's my honor to be able to be hosting you today. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>